took about ten direct hits on the house today, or parts of the house that even, more even, more. even possibly more than ten direct hits. Uh, um, th there's absolutely no likelihood that it's ever going to get any lighter. This never seen before footage is from inside a house in Homs, where photojournalist Paul Conroy and colleagues were trapped for days, shelled by government forces during a relentless siege. The mortars were the worst because you could hear the launch. You'd hear that very deep rumble, boom. And then you'd, there'd be about a two second gap, then you'd hear, and it was from the effect you, you either knew if it was going to be a direct hit on the house or if it was going to be very close. Hopefully stopping the evacuation of myself, William, Edith, and our translator. Okay, one more day here, and this makes me really, really, really anxious. We decided to go the route that we came in and make a go of it ourselves. I think we could sit here for too long and things could get quite, quite bad, but already quite bad. It was quite oppressive. Things slowly ran out. We were getting less and less visits from the people who were looking after us. The fighting was getting more intense. After an international uproar over the condition of the journalists, Syrian Red Crescent ambulances were sent to evacuate them, but they were warned of a possible regime trap. Escape from the city looked more and more difficult. We'd lost the ambulances, we'd lost the tunnel. I mean, at that point, nobody could, you know, th there were no options on the table. I couldn't lay there and allow some idiots to come in and just shoot me. The decision to move came quickly, activists risking their lives to enable the escape. The shelling was immense. I think we took a lot of hits in the house today. All of a sudden the guys, the free city and army, ran in, ran in and just said, get ready to go, threw us in trucks. And we've just been through a rather arduous journey to get out of Babar Amra and we're now heading to a relatively safe place. Hey guys, well done. No more Baba Amra for now. This was a guy who was in the same house as Marie and myself when Marie was killed, when the explosion happened, and he was one of the people who dragged me dragged me to safety when my leg was in pieces. Paul's colleague at the Sunday Times, famed war correspondent Marie Colvin, was killed along with a French photographer on February 22nd. That's good. Finish. And finally, freedom. I'm on the last leg of my escape from Syria, just crossed into Lebanon. I'm on a motorbike one more time and I think we've just crossed the boulder field and I have a uh, a big hole in my left leg and some shrapnel in my thigh and it's quite unpleasant. Safely back home in London, Paul credits the activists with keeping Syria in the headlines and saving not only his life, but the lives of countless others. These guys who've been out there with the cameras, um, they're the ones who've, who've really kept the lights on in Syria. And I think the regime now are determined just to turn them lights off. We're getting news through that they're picking up, picking up the activists, you know, one by one, they're picking them up. Um, a very good friend of ours, Ali, Ali Othman, has been picked up. They will kill him unless somebody steps in and shouts his name far and loud. Which is why Paul says he will keep reminding the world of the days he spent trapped in Homs. Nothing, he says, compared to what civilians in Syria go through every single day.